The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he's got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to start a hymn that I'm pretty sure you know. As soon as you figure out what it is, will you sing with me, please? Ready? Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you. I know you looked a little worried when I first said you were going to sing with me, but you knew that one, right? 
You knew all the words to that one. You didn't even have to think about it because it's not only in your head, it's also in your heart. It's one of those hymns that you carry with you in the good times and in the bad times and in every time in between. And it was written by a man who knew what it meant to be lost, knew what it meant to be dead, knew what it meant to be blind. John Newton was a slave trader who one day had an awakening that what he was doing in life was the wrong way, that he had become the younger son in the prodigal son parable, and that it was time for him to go home to his Lord. And all of us resonate with that song in one way or another. If I had you tell your stories, you would have stories of being lost and found, of being blind and seeing, of being like the dead and yet alive again. And all of these feelings, all of these stories are wrapped up in the parable of the prodigal son today. I'm going to tell it to you again. And as I do, I would like you to think about putting yourself into the story. Are you the younger son today? Are you the forgiving father? Are you the older son? Or maybe even just the crowd of slaves looking around and scratching their head at everything that's going on. Once upon a time, there was a man who was ready to see the world. He'd been working at the family farm for his entire life, and he wanted to see something beyond the bounds of the section. But he was going to need money to do it. So he asked his um, dad for some money, and surprisingly, his dad said, Okay, here you go. And he took the money, and he ran. He bought a bus ticket that took him to the farthest edge that his money would take him. And when he got dropped off at the edge of the world, he gave not one thought to tomorrow and instead decided, let's have some fun. And for the next amount of time, he spent everything he had on fun on what he wanted to do on what felt good. Until one day, the money ran out. And the bill collectors came and he had nothing, not one cent to his name. And even worse, there was a famine in the land and there was no food to be had, let alone water or clothing or a place to sleep. Well, the young man had been trained by his father, so he went and got a job. The problem was, it was with a pig farmer. Now, this is not a problem for you and me, and I know there are some of you here in this place. But if you were a Jew, a person who has been forbidden to eat pork, let alone have anything to do with pigs, and here you are, the last job you can find doing the one thing that you know that your dad would not be proud of you for. The younger son had hit the bottom. And finally, he started to long for home. He knew that he didn't deserve to be treated like a son anymore. He had spent all the inheritance that he had. He had done things that as he looked back at them, he was very ashamed of. He didn't know if he could ever earn forgiveness. And yet, the call to home was so strong that he found his footsteps leading that way. Meanwhile, back at the farm, The father was waiting. He was waiting day in and day out, hoping against hope with his nose pressed against the front window so he could see as far as he could see. And one day, 
a speck appeared on the horizon and he walked like his son and he looked like his son and it was his son. He was so excited, he didn't wait. He ran down the road, grabbed his son in a bear hug and kissed him and said, you were lost, but now you're found. And the younger son tried to apologize and he said, you were blind, but now you see. You were dead. And now you are alive again and I love you. Let's get you dressed up, cleaned up. Let's put the best clothes on you and kill the fatted calf. We're having a party tonight. And the younger son could hardly believe it. And the people started piling in from all areas of the county, celebrating this lost son now found. Meanwhile, out in the fields, the older son the responsible one, the one who always did exactly as they were asked to do, who never did anything they weren't supposed to do, who was going to be the one who the father would gladly place the entire operation in his hands when it became time. That son didn't get the memo. Nobody ran out to tell him that his brother was home. He just worked and worked and worked and finished his day and came home to music and dancing. He grabbed one of the servants and said, did I forget dad's birthday again? What's going on? And the servant said, your brother is home. And your dad said, we needed to have, ve- uh, we needed to have veal tonight and a party. And he's given him the best robe and the best ring and the best sandals. The older son could not believe what he was hearing. And he refused to join the party. So once again, the father comes out. He comes out this time to his older son and says, come, celebrate. Your brother who was gone is back who was dead is alive, who was lost is found, and we just have to celebrate. And the older son said, your son, your younger son, who spent all your money, who did everything wrong, you're giving him a party? Where's my party? Where's my thanks? And the father says, son, I love you, and everything I have is yours. Come, let's celebrate your brother together. And that's where the parable ends. We don't know what happens next. You have to fill it in for yourself. But as you listen to that story today, who are you? Maybe at one time or another, you've been that younger son. You've been that recipient of free grace, undeserved love. You messed up. And still you were forgiven. You ran away. And still you were welcomed back home. Or maybe... You find yourself as the forgiving father. I have to admit, for me, those moments are small, usually. But those moments when you have a deep well of love, a deep well of forgiveness, a deep well of faith and hope, and you are willing to reach out again and again to those whom you love. Or maybe today you're the older brother, the one who sees people get stuff they don't deserve, who sees people who don't deserve forgiveness receive forgiveness, see those who have run away be welcomed back home, and you wonder, where's your party? 
Or maybe you're a bit of all three. Or maybe this morning you're one, and this afternoon you'll be another, and tomorrow morning you'll be still a third. You see, we as Lutherans believe that this word is a living word. We read these stories, which are two, three, four, five thousand years old, again and again when we gather for worship, because we believe it not only tells us about our past and what happened way back when, but we believe that this word is a living word that works on us here and now and in this place. That when we hear this story again, God has something to say to us. In Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. God is speaking to us today through the word. May God open your ears and your hearts and your minds to hear it and loosen your hands and feet to hear and respond. Thanks be to God. Amen.